Let's create a retro camera in Blender. First of all, you want to start by gathering plenty of reference photos as you can see I've done. Be sure to gather photos from as many angles as possible so your model will be accurate. Having sufficient references is often what separates a good model from a bad one. Before we get started, screencast keys will be enabled so you'll be able to see what keys I'm pressing here in the bottom left. Now then, open a new Blender scene and for now we can delete the camera and light. Select the cube, press N to bring out the settings and change the dimensions to 3.8, 1.2 and 2.1 respectively and bring it up on the Z-axis by selecting it. Hitting G, then Z to lock the movement on the Z-axis. Let's start by creating the basic shapes of the camera. Select your cube, press tab to switch into edit mode and press Ctrl R to add a loop cut and place it just over halfway. To adjust the position after confirming, alt click the loop cut you created and double tap G to move it along the faces. Now select the new face you created and press E to extrude it upwards. And please keep in mind this is all in accordance with the reference images I've gathered. To create the handle piece, add another loop cut in the center and move the edge forward slightly on the Y axis. Now hit Ctrl A and apply the scale and give your model a bevel modifier. Set the bevel amount to 0.13 and the segments to 10 and shade your model smooth. To get the ends of our model more rounded, select the four edges, press Ctrl B and bevel them, making sure that no faces overlap. Let's now begin to model the top buttons. Start by adding a cylinder and scaling it down to match your reference. To extrude it out, press E and then S to scale it outwards and move it up on the Z axis slightly so the faces don't overlap. Then again, press E to extrude it upwards. Select the top face, press I to inset the face and extrude it for a final time. Now, in face select mode, alt select the middle loop, pressed P and choose separate by selection. With the new object selected in edit mode, right click and subdivide it and in the properties, give it four subdivisions. With the faces still selected, right click and press poke faces and switch to vertex select mode. Select one of the vertices, then press shift G and select amount of connecting edges. With the vertices selected, press S to scale them outwards slightly while holding down shift. Be sure to also shade the other part of the button auto smooth by right clicking and pressing shade auto smooth. For the other button, you can duplicate the original pressed G to move it and press shift C to lock it on the X and Y axis and scale it according to your reference. For the other button, you can add another cylinder, scale it down, and inset the faces and extrude them up to create the basic shape. Once done, apply the scale and give it a bevel modifier. To create the lens, add a cylinder and rotate it by 90 degrees on the x-axis. Adjust the size of the cylinder to match with your model and reference. As we can see from the reference, to create the lens we need to make a series of insets and extrudes. It will be difficult to scale these exactly to your reference, so try to be as accurate as you can be by continually referring back to your references while modeling. Once done with your basic modeling, we can go in and create the extra detail on the lens. Alt select the loop around your lens, press P and separate it by selection. In edit mode, right click and subdivide it and in the properties, change the number of cuts to four. Now select one of the edges, press Shift G and choose length. In the properties, change the value to zero and then press the up arrow once. With your edges selected, press Ctrl B and bevel them slightly. Now hit Alt E and select extrude faces along normals. Now select the separate parts of the lens and press Ctrl J to join them back together. In the modifier tab, give your lens a subdivision modifier. To straighten out the edges, give it a loop cut and move it to the end. When done, shade it smooth. Let's now create the switch. Add a cylinder and scale it to match your reference. Inset the faces and extrude them to create the base. For the top piece, select two of the edges, extrude them up and fill in the faces. Create a loop cut on the top face, move it upwards and bevel it to create the rounded top. To create some of the indents, we need to make use of the Boolean modifier. For the flash, add a cylinder and scale it to match your reference once again. Now select the base of your camera, give it a Boolean modifier and select the cylinder as the object. Select your cylinder again and in the object properties, open the viewport display tab and change the display as to bounds. Now you'll be able to see the effect of your Boolean object in real time. If your Boolean modifier is causing some weird shading outputs, right click your base model and shade it auto smooth rather than just smooth. 
When you're done with everything, apply the Boolean modifier and delete your object. To create the glass for the flash, add an edge loop, slide it up and fill in the face. Repeat the same process for any other indents in the model. For the switch on the side, make use of another Boolean modifier and apply it once placed properly. Delete the object, inset the face it produced and extrude it outwards to create the rim. Then select all the new faces and make it a separate object. Apply the scale and give the new object a simple deform modifier and set it to the z-axis. Also be sure to set the origin to the center by going to the object tab and under set origin, set it to geometry. Let's now create the clips on the sides of the camera. Add in a cube and, and scale it down to match your reference. Apply the scale and select the two edges and bevel them. Then add in a cylinder and once again scale it to match your reference. Be sure the cylinder goes all the way through the object and then give it a boolean modifier. Once done, apply the scale again, give your model a bevel modifier, duplicate it and place one on the other side. To finish off the front of our model, we'll be creating this top piece. To do so, we'll need to add in a cube as our boolean object and match the scale to our reference. Create a loop cut around the cube and move it up from the center slightly and extrude the face out. Once done, apply the scale and bevel the two top edges. Just as we've previously gone over, set the display as to bounds in the data properties tab so we can see how far into the mesh we're making the cut. Give the base of your model a boolean modifier and adjust the placement of the cube accordingly. Add in a Bezier curve, tap into edit mode and press S, Y, 0 to straighten it. In the curve properties, slightly adjust the depth under the geometry tab. Move the curve to the center of the edge of your cutout and increase the extrusion value so it fits across the entirety of the edge. Once done, extrude the top point on the x-axis and rotate by 90 degrees on the Y. Now adjust the points to create a smooth curve connecting the points. When finished, convert the curve to a mesh and fill the face. Then duplicate it, slide it over and rotate it by 180 degrees on the z-axis. To create the next piece, we'll need to add a boolean modifier to create another cutout. Add a cube and scale it to match your reference. Apply the scale and bevel the top edges. Select the top four faces and extrude them out slightly and give your base model a boolean modifier. Adjust that object accordingly and apply the modifier. Using what you've learned so far, make use of some additional Boolean modifiers to carve out the detail and we'll be done with modeling the top piece. Be sure to continually refer back to your references to get an accurate outcome. For the sake of simplicity, we'll be using this image as our primary reference to create the back of the camera. We want to ensure that our back lens aligns with the front and in order to do so, select the front lens in edit mode and with the face selected, hold shift ace and choose cursor to select it. Now add in a cylinder, rotate it 90 degrees, move it back on the Y axis and scale it to match your reference. Once your cylinder is in place, we're going to use the same basic principles of insetting and extruding faces to create the basic shapes. When done, give your model a subdivision surface modifier and straighten out any edges that need straightening. For more detail, we'll add a double rim going around the back. In edit mode, add a loop cut on either side and alt select one of them. Hit Ctrl, Shift and Tab simultaneously and select Edge to be able to snap to edges. Now with one of the loops still selected, press G and lock it to the Z-axis and hover over the other edge loop while holding down Ctrl in order to align with it on the Z-axis. Now select the edges only up until just before halfway across the camera and extrude them out on the Y axis, then extrude them down on the Z, then back on the Y and be sure to fill in the faces on either end to create more detail. Add a loop, cut through the center and move it out slightly. Then select the rim, make it a separate object and give it a subdivision surface modifier. Once done, duplicate it and attach one right underneath. Before moving on to texturing, we need to split up the geometry in order to create the different sections of where the materials are going to be placed. And as we won't be retopologizing in this tutorial, we'll add the geometry in manually. All we'll need to do is create the geometry in the center that separates the leather material from the metal on either side. To begin, press K to use the knife tool which we'll use to cut new geometry into our mesh. Align the tool with the top of the center of our lens, left click when done and place the next cut on the far left edge and press enter when done. Now press Ctrl, Shift, Tab and make sure you're snapping to vertexes. Select your new vertices and make sure they align with the one on the camera. 
Now I had a loop cut around your camera and join the endpoints by selecting them and pressing J. As the leather changes level on our reference, we'll have to mimic that on our model. To do so, select the bottom edge, right click and subdivide it. Now align the new vertex with the top on the X axis and press J to join them. Now repeat this process for the right side of the camera until you've gone all the way around the mesh and have joined at the end. Once you're done with the top, do the same thing for the bottom to create your separate geometry. Now that we're finally done with all the modeling, we can move on to texturing. Open up the shading editor and give the base of your camera a new material. Now go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons and make sure you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. This will enable us to quickly set up PBR materials. Go online and look for leather textures and download the available maps. There's plenty of free sources online. Now select your principal BSDF and press Ctrl Shift T. Now locate where you save the maps to and press Setup. This will automatically set up your PBR materials in one click. In edit mode, select all of your mesh, press U and select Q projection. In the UV editor, you can adjust the scale of the texture on your model to ensure it's projected properly. Now select the top and bottom of the mesh, add a new material and assign it. Again, find another material online and repeat the process. I found that a steel material mixed with a glossy shader worked well. Go ahead and repeat this process for your remaining materials. For this tutorial, I will be using cycles, so for any glass materials, you can simply add a glass BSDF and connect it to the surface of the material output. To get some nice natural lighting in your scene, you can add a HDRI. Go to the world shader, select the background node and press Ctrl T and locate your HDRI file. Now create a platform for your camera, set up some nice lighting in your scene and you're all finished. If you want more tutorials just like these ones, be sure to like and subscribe. Check out the rest of my channel for more useful Blender tutorials. And as always, I hope you've enjoyed and thanks for watching.